Okay, so obviously we're talking about cooking with oils on oh, this. Oh, I'm trying to decide. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to return it because we have to keep. I have to keep turning around, I'm trying to figure out where to set my phone. Here, I'll just bring something it up against. Okay. Oh, I can see. Okay. Here we go. All right. So anyway, so most of you may know. Most of you may go ahead and cook with cook with oils. Um, and it's not super intimidating. Now, do you want to talk about? Because one of the biggest things we get is we know that heat compromises some of the effectiveness. Yeah. So, so while you do that, I'm grabbing. I'm going to start working on putting the meatballs um, together. So okay. while Carol helps. Yeah. Um, so we know that our essential oils have therapeutic benefits. That's why they're called certified pure therapeutic grade. Um, but they do have what's called a flashpoint. So if you were, for example, to put them in something and get them really, really hot, then they would still have their flavor benefits, but they would lose their therapeutic benefits or some of them. So for example, if you're going to add an essential oil to a soup or a sauce, or um, it would mostly deal with soups and sauces, um, you want to make sure that you add those very last thing. Hey, Heather, um, make sure you add those very, very last thing so that um, they don't completely flash off and you lose the therapeutic benefit. Yeah. Now, if you're gonna put them in something like, I'm gonna make in, in just a minute while Amy's talking, I'm gonna start working on a um, salad dressing that I absolutely love. If you like balsamic vinaigrette type dressings, this is a great one. Um, and if you're gonna put it in that, then obviously it retains its therapeutic benefits of the oils that you put in it because you're not heating them up. Well, and one of the ways that I can think of right off the top of our head that we kind of do that anyway is when we do a steam. Right. So obviously we know that those still work even though there's the heat involved. Right. So it's just a matter but of... But if you think about it, you heat the water first. Right. And then you drop the oils in. Yeah. And those of you who so, want to explain what a steamer is. A steamer, a steamer is actually really good for this time of year. I just used one significantly on Saturday because like I already said, I had all kinds of seasonal things going on because of the tree pollen outside. So um, what you do with the steamer is, and I have a cup right here like I usually do, um, I put in um, about an inch, inch and a half of water in a mug and then heat it for about a minute to a minute and a half to where it's super hot, starting to get steamy. And then I add, I personally for mine, add two drops each of lemon, peppermint, melaleuca, and oregano. And the other day when I was doing it, I also added a drop um, of On Guard and Breathe. Um, but typically it's those four oils that we use. And then, again, you don't want to get it too terribly hot. Hello, Betty Holtz and Teresa Mappin. Um, I cup my hand over the top of the mug, close my eyes, because you don't want that oregano steam or the peppermint steam in your eyes. Oh, goodness and then, yeah, you're going you're gonna to not like me for a minute after you do this anyway. So let's not make it worse. Um, and then you cup your hand over it and then inhale as deeply as you can. And like, for example, when I was dealing with it the other day, I had one side of my sinuses that was more clogged than the other side or nose that was more clogged than the other side. So I just kind of would cover that and inhale and cover the other side and inhale. And it's amazing to me. It doesn't work the same way for everybody, but for me, that'll dry up, um, stuff that's running faster than anything else. Even even the other stuff that I used to use, so it's kind yeah, of you a, really swear by this. Thing. Yeah, that works. Too. Yeah, if, if that doesn't work, work, I know I'm in real trouble. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. a great one for me. So that's the steamer, and again, that's two drops each of lemon, peppermint, melaleuca, and oregano, and then depending on what else you got going on, you can add a drop of on guard or breathe. Well, I think you could probably do you know whatever too, because I just saw the other day. Where they um, and I've been kind of utilizing this. Where they said that melaleuca is a huge um, decongestant. Yeah. Um, and so, which is interesting because yeah. the emotional property of melaleuca is letting go. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense that it's a decongestant yeah. <laughs> and makes that all happen. Yeah. So. And sometimes yeah. when I make a roller ball for a roller bottle for this time of year, because I have trouble when things are blooming and when things are dying. Um, so when I have trouble with this time of year, then I put in my roller bottle. Um, lemon, lavender, and peppermint, and then sometimes I'll add uh, melaleuca. I've been known to add pedigree because it has some of the same um, therapeutic benefits as lavender. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and then Purify is also a good one for if you've got the itchies and that kind of stuff going on. Because when I'm doing with the, dealing with this, everything itches. So, oh, yeah. hello, Angie Goderich. Hi, guys. So I am mixing up um, the meatballs at the moment, which it can also be meatloaf. But because I'm going to cook it, I'm going to cook it in a muffin tin. And so we're going to do it that way. And you know what, Carol? I forgot that this meat is so not fatty Dense. at all. Yeah. Um, I might have to spray those. It might stick to those. Oh, yeah. Or it wouldn't necessarily. Yeah. So, okay. So I have a pound of ground beef. I've done one egg. And I've done um, gluten-free um, breadcrumbs is what's in there at the... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so the um, oil that I'm going to add to this, I'm going to add um, oregano. And here's my question. Do you want a toothpick? Do you, do you, no, no, probably not. No, I don't want toothpick. Um, do we want to, can you do a pan real quick so I can just cook a little bit and we can taste it to make sure that the, the oils are enough in there? Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. My mom taught me this recipe. I don't even know if my, hey mom, I happen to see mom. Um, that you can, mom taught me this trick that, you know how when you're making something that's ground beef and you're like, I can't taste it. It's like, ew, I can't eat, you know, raw beef. So my mom taught me, she just, you just take a little bit, cook it real quick, and then you can taste it and see if you need to add any more. So I'm going to start with just one drop of each. So we're going to do one drop of um, oregano. Actually, I'm going to do two, will you get the black pepper? Do uh -huh. two drops of black pepper, but one drop of oregano. You all have heard my story, right, about the oregano. The very first time that I did oregano and spaghetti sauce, I was so excited to do I was going to use my oils in cooking. Hey, um, Stephanie Maxwell and Regine Franklin. Um, I'm going to save the rosemary for the potatoes, okay. mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. So in oregano, black pepper, thyme, and basil is what I'm doing. It. Do you think basil is okay in the meatloaf? I love I mean, basil. The meatloaf, but okay. Um, it's whatever you And need. so I get out my crock pot with the big, um, with my big, my big crock pot with sauce in it, and I'm so excited, and I put like eight drops of oregano in my sauce, crock pot. Yeah, listen, there wasn't enough spaghetti sauce in the house to dilute it, and I added everything I had. So, needless to say now, I do one drop, maybe two. But for some people, like Carol asked, if you heard her, asked me about the um, toothpick. The reason she asked me that is because sometimes if you just stick the toothpick, you know, you can stick a toothpick in, in the, right there in the orifice, and stick it in there, mm -hmm. and then just swirl it in whatever you're doing, and that way you get really a very yeah, small that's amount. that's more for sauces and that type of yeah. thing. So, okay, so I just um, am doing the, um, the meat, put the meat together for that. Um, in, while we're talking, the potatoes are cooking um, for the mashed potatoes that we're doing with, um, we're gonna put rosemary in those. Now, guys, understand, we cannot make everything that I put on that menu. We opted out of the dessert aspect of actually making it. We're gonna talk about it and show it to you. But listen, we're in quarantine, guys, and we got to be careful because pajama, food, pajama pants are very um, deceiving. So, you know, you need to try your jeans on every couple of days and make sure this stuff's still fitting because Lord knows we're all eating weird yeah, things. That's and, the thing that made yeah. me maddest about the whole um, stuff, the snotty nose and stuff on, on Saturday was because I had been enjoying going out for a walk every afternoon. Well, I can't do it if the tree pollen is going to be that nasty to me. Yeah. Yeah. So can I go ahead and start making the dressing? Yes, yes absolutely. Okay. So this is a yummy salad dressing that I have made several times. I absolutely love it. It's a um, wild orange vinaigrette, um, balsamic vinaigrette. So, um, and I have one of these handy dandy little um, pampered chef mixers. I know you can get them other places, but um, the recipe for this one, if you want to write it down real quick, is one cup of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a half a cup of balsamic vinegar. I should have opened this bottle. You also need to point out too, because you don't like mustard. Right. So knowing that sometimes when there's stuff in recipes that you don't like by themselves, you like them when they're all together. Yeah. So, um, I said the half cup of balsamic vinegar, one and a half, one to two drops of wild orange. Now I will tell you this: I put more wild orange in it than what it says. Oh yeah, can't have too much. Yeah. Um, too much. and then two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Again, quarantine. I have Miracle Whip, so we're not using mayonnaise. We're just using Miracle Whip. And a half cup of brown sugar, and then sea salt and black pepper to taste. Let's see, Amy. Yeah. Hey, Tana. Hey, Eric. Um, how many drops of rosemary do you add to the mashed potatoes? 
Um, we're going to, if somebody's asking that question, yes. I, I don't know yet. We're going to decide. Then that one I know we can taste as, you know, kind of taste it. I'll probably just start with one, maybe two, and then we'll go from there. So, we're, yeah, so that one you'll have to keep watching for that because I'm not sure yet about that. So, again, we're doing a cup of the um, extra virgin olive oil. I had to go get that today because I was out. Now, the thing with this, Carol, is it's going to be cold. So, yes. we are going to get any, any of the oils that you're adding, the therapeutic aspect of that is still going to be right. present and um, high, if yeah. that makes sense. Because yeah. we all, for those of you that just joined us, we were talking about how heat will reduce a little bit of that effectiveness from the therapeutic aspect. We can add flavor, but that's why we're talking about how you add your oils last, if at all possible. Now, here's another little, little tidbit for you. I am out of regular balsamic vinegar, and Aldi did not have it when I went there today. They had everything else. So <laughs> we have a place in town that's called the Nashville Olive Oil Company. If you live in this area, this is worth finding. Um, I'm going to add dark chocolate balsamic I vinegar. Mean, I was thinking the pear would have been yeah. good, too. Well, we could do half of each. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or we could just do the pear cranberry. Well, I mean, I think it's chocolate. always chocolate. Though. Chocolate's always good. You want to do half and half? Yeah, oh, yeah I, exactly. I, I was looking at the. Yeah. Okay, so it was, what I say, half a cup? Okay, so I'm going to do a quarter of a cup of. Okay, I have to think this through. That would be 10 oh, shots. Okay, so we're going to do a quarter of a cup of the uh, dark chocolate balsamic vinegar, and then we're going to do a quarter of a cup of the cranberry pear balsamic vinegar. They have all kinds of different flavors of olive oil and uh, vinegars at this store. And they'll let you taste test them and they recommend um, oils to put together and it's a great place to go. We could, those of you who are in the area when the quarantine is lifted and we're allowed to, when we're allowed to be together again. Yeah, we could do a taste Hey, Karen Butler. Hey, Amy. Okay, so that's the vinegars. And for those then, of you that are joining us from Facebook Live, we're also doing on Zoom. So that's why we're looking at two different places. Yep. And you do a half a cup of packed brown sugar. And for those of you just joining, we're in the process of making the meatballs, but I need to taste it and see um, if I added enough oil to it. So that's what I'm doing right now. Also had run out of brown sugar. Brown sugar? You can't yeah, run out of brown sugar. I know. Sugar. Well, that's because I made the cookies that I wasn't supposed to eat the other day, and yeah. Okay, so I'm off screen, and Amy's back to the screen. Oh. That's just the way we roll right now. Okay. All right, so I just tried that. I cooked a little bit of the meat up, so I'm going to add another drop of oregano to that. So um, it will have just been, actually, I'm going to add two. No, I'm just going to add one. So two drops of Oregano, I'm going to add, oh, Carol Stern brown sugar. I'm going to add um, two drops of thyme, two drops of basil. I'm going to add some more black pepper. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt, um, what obviously is not well. And then I'm going to get those in the oven. So, so that's what I'm doing right now. And then probably here shortly the potatoes will be done, and then we'll work on those. Okay, can we get out of your way? Yeah, no, fine. Okay, and then I need the mayonnaise and the Dijon mustard. Yes, Betty Holtz, I'm using mustard in the Nutsa recipe and choosing to do so. Um, two tablespoons of mayonnaise. I sure wish we were all together. And yeah, this would be, be more fun if you could taste it. This all together, but Someday. Yeah. Because, y'all, that's a great reminder. This is not going to be our forever, temporary. And I was talking with someone today, and we were reminding each other that it's not even really, most of it is not really even for us. It's for others. So it's a good reminder that it's not all about us, I guess. Okay. And then what was the one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Okay, so I am putting the meatball, I'm putting the meat in this little muffin tin, because that's how I'm cooking it this way instead of trying to, you know, do a big one since we're on, obviously, shorter time. So. Hey, Claudia. This is what I am doing. Oh, here. gotta shake the mustard. This is what happens when you get somebody who doesn't like mustard, mustard to put in a recipe. <laughs> 
Okay, so a teaspoon of mustard. And one empty tin, so I'm having to take some out of the other tin, to, you know, in the box. Okay, and give me a salt and pepper. You have a chance. What'd you say? Salt, salt and salt. pepper. There you go. Okay. Just gonna do a, oh, I need to refill my salt container. salt things in there. This will probably be over salted. Salt and pepper to taste. All right, so now I'm going to put the meatballs in the oven. Oh, no, I'm not cooking. It's not oh, we didn't turn the oven on. I did turn it on, but I must not have done the cook. Should I do the convection of the film? Yeah, at this cooker? point. Yeah. So do I just hit the button? Yeah, and then the numbers. Yeah. And, and then, then start. On this, this side, one? yes. Okay. I didn't hit the start. And button. double check. I don't think there's anything in there, but double oh, check. Lord. We don't need to start. We don't need to start fire. Yeah, that'd be the talk of this oh, yeah, internet. That'd be great. Although we might have a viral video. I want to go viral for that. Okay, and then I put all of this stuff in my little handy dandy little mixer thing, and I'm going to mix it up. But you could use any type of a mixing container to do this. Immersion blender, whatever. So I'm going to mix. Oh, I didn't put the oil in. Well, Gotta put the oil in. Oops. <laughs> well, you feel because there's so many. Are you done with these? Yeah. I'll just move them back over here. So it calls for one to two drops, but I usually put four or five in there. The potatoes Maybe are six. ready to match. Yes. Regine, we did add oils to the meatballs for flavor. We did. We did oregano, thyme, basil, and black pepper. Um, I did two drops of oregano. Um, I think I did three drops of basil, three drops of thyme, and then I did about four, six drops of um, uh, black pepper. And then, um, and then I added some sea salt. So we've got that going. Um, and again, that's one of those things that's to taste. Some of you, my mom um, loves to add fennel to her meatballs, and they are yummy. Um, they can just wreak a little bit of havoc with your stomach if you're not careful with that. But, um, but they are yummy. But I did not add fennel, Mom, so did not add fennel tonight. All right. All right. So I've got this mixed up. Yes, Betty Holtz, I may have the jar of mustard for the next three years unless you guys come and have hot dogs or something, and then you can have the Dijon mustard. If we ever get to travel again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. About how long does that take to warm up? Mm. Five minutes, okay. maybe. But you can. How long do they have to cook? Oh, I guess it you can put them in there while yeah. they're while it's heating up. Yeah. Hey, Peggy Moore Muse. Okay, so that's the salad dressing. I guess I should taste a bit of it to see. So the potatoes are about ready to mash. Oh, yum! And you got to taste that. You can stick your finger in there. It's just us, right? Exactly. Oh, that's super yummy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's great that's over. Really I I honestly love I'm this. I'm surprised. I'm acting like I'm surprised yeah. that it's good. No. I've done it before. That's why I was willing to do it again. Um, I love this over a spinach salad with strawberries, or I've sometimes I've done strawberries and um, mandarin oranges. Yeah. Apples. Um, regular lettuce, it's good with. Um, anything that would be good for a balsamic. So I'm getting ready to drain the potatoes, and then we're gonna mash those. So Charlotte, I'm gonna need a little bit of butter and some milk. Okay. And then we need to do, we're also going to do an oil um, dip for, oops, sorry, I have a screen, um, for bread. Um, and you can use French bread or whatever, but I actually earlier this afternoon made, um, some gluten-free, we have a recipe, a family recipe that we've used for years it's called Foolproof Biscuits, but I did this one with um, gluten-free flour and um, a different milk. So, because in our household, we've got a couple that have to do um, gluten-free and dairy-free, and so we've done that. So I made those biscuits earlier, but that's what we're gonna use. Um, so that's what we're gonna use I this one to do that. So um, let's start making the dip for the bread. Okay, and I just realized, recipe? nope, it's on my phone, and my phone's occupied, so we're just going to have to wing it. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll just so, take a little. so just, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So just do the oil 
the base oil that we're doing, and then we'll just add the stuff to it. And Carol, you have the masher for the potatoes. Do you have a hand masher thing? Okay, so funny story, since my mother-in-law's on here. So one of the very first times that I ever went to their house after um, when my husband and I were dating, and I was trying to be helpful, and I wanted to be a part of what was going on. So it was Sunday after church, and so we're having lunch. So I asked my mother-in-law, well, not my mother-in-law at the time, my mother-in-law now, I asked her if there was anything that I could help with, and we were having, like, roasted potatoes. And so she's like, sure, you can mash the potatoes. And I'm like, okay. And she hands me this. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? Now, y'all, listen. I grew up in a big family. There were nine of us. And that's if we didn't have any friends or company over. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? She said, you're supposed to mash the potatoes. And I'm like, what? So when I grew up, we had to use the mixer. Like, if nothing else, a hand mixer or... I mentioned, so I'm like, so yeah, but the funny thing is now this is what I always mash with. So anyway, you think that's enough for the two of us? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so, okay. so I'm mashing the potatoes and I'm not going to add the rosemary until that um, wingest things. <laughs> Peggy Muse, you'll like that. Peggy gets real concerned when she has to do something with me because I um, tend to just wing it and yeah. on the fly. And she's you like, said there was a she needs to have the plan and the thing. Um, it was black pepper. Um, Oil? Yeah, black pepper, um, oregano, cold drop. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Paula asked if she could just drive by and we open the back door so you can smell it all. Oh, two drops. What was that? Pepper. Oh. Why'd you get the cilantro out? Because do not use. Because I was going to talk about it. Just checking. Don't Someone worry. doesn't like cilantro. I love cilantro. How much garlic? I don't know. Just a little bit. Just. I don't know. Just a tiny bit. A little dabble. Ooh, do yeah, you that's, yeah, let's do that. So. Woo! That's some potent garlic. All right. I'm going to show you the potatoes, guys. Here they are. Don't they look yummy? I'm getting hungry. I know, Amy Steele. I wish you were here. Well, we wouldn't be allowed to be here anyway. What am I saying? But anyway, someday, guys, someday we can all be together. And What else in the... What else? Uh, did you do the black pepper? Yes. So we did. And did you... Um, let's do... Let's do basil. Okay. Yeah. And then that should be, that should be good. All right. Well, and then most of the time people will grind some bark, black pepper in there too, but that's probably too much pepper since I got two drops of pepper in there too. I'm going to add a little bit of salt um, to the potatoes. Then I'm going to add black pepper add and then I'm going to add rosemary. So hang on while I, there's, that's just like you want Ooh, to. I smell the rosemary. Or no, that's oh, basil. Yeah. I smell. Um, black pepper. Can we grab the black pepper? Again, sometimes I would just use the black pepper, you know, just regular pepper, but because we're doing the oils, I want to um, try to utilize that as much as possible. So we're just making a dip over here for the bread. So it's just yeah. um, olive oil. We'll post the recipe somewhere, because right now we're just swinging it. Well, it's, it's on my phone, and my phone is, is I, we're utilizing it for, um, for the Facebook. So uh, this Facebook. is olive oil, garlic, black pepper, basil we put in here. Okay. Oregano. Did we put the oregano in? Oh no. I don't know. I don't smell oregano. I don't smell it either. I don't think so. No, I just did the black pepper. Is that good? No, it's not good. I'm not a huge fan. When you talk about dip for bread, I'm looking for cheese. <laughs> um, I just want butter. Okay. So I'm gonna start with just one drop of rosemary in the mashed potatoes. Because I already did the hang on. One drop of rosemary. I don't think I did. Okay, so we were talking earlier about how to use the um, Two toothpick method for the oils. I literally just, this is one of those things for fancy food. Um, I take the end of the toothpick, stick it in the bottle. Oh, this one's not going to fit. There we go. Get it up there so that there's just a little bit on the toothpick. It's not even a whole drop and then just swirl it through whatever you're doing. Um, you've seen us do this, but I, we were also gonna talk about, like with this meatballs that we're making. Is it good? Yes. Yeah, with the meatballs that we're making, um, this is kind of an Italian themed meal. We're having it with mashed potatoes, but you could have it with spaghetti. So- Just um, not eight drops of oregano, remember that. Yeah, exactly. That. I'm checking yeah, the meatballs. Case in point. Okay. Um, I often will make my own spaghetti sauce with just tomatoes and green peppers and onions um, and cook it all down and put my, 
put my spices in, but you can also do this with a jar of spaghetti sauce, mm -hmm. or we often do this in just a second. I'll talk about doing it with salsa. Um, but I just use, um, typically when I make that, I'll make a big size skillet is what I make the sauce in. Um, and then I will use a drop of oregano in that size skillet. Um, I often use black pepper oil in my spaghetti sauce and I'll use, um, uh, sometimes I use cumin oil in spaghetti sauce. Um, sometimes I use basil. It just kind of depends what I'm, thyme is another one you could use. Yeah, I wouldn't use, I just use oregano. I wouldn't use thyme and oregano because those yes. are both kind of hot oils, but you could use oregano and basil or whatever. Um, so I'll do that in the spaghetti sauce. Again, if you want the therapeutic benefits, then you add those very last thing. Um, if you just want the flavor, you can put it in as it's cooking. So either one works. You can do the same thing with salsa. I love when often when we do classes, we'll do salsa and chips so that people can experience the taste of the oil. And in now, Amy's not going to like this, but in our salsa, sometimes yeah. I'll put cilantro. Yeah. Um, lime is great in salsa. Yeah. Um, well, here's the thing. I love peach salsa. You know, yes. when I do the salsas like that. So I'm thinking adding wild even orange. the wild orange or tangerine yep. to that would give would give that a, a flavor of that too. Yep. So, so I can't remember if I said black pepper. That's another thing yeah. you can add to salsa. Um, so those are good. And then soups are the same way. Um, I've gotten to the place where I don't really have any dried herbs in my house anymore. Often, like this time of year, I just got stuff to. Usually, I buy the plants. But this year it's early enough that I went ahead and got seeds to start some herbs. Um, give me something to do in the next couple of weeks. Watch my little herbs grow. And, <laughs> Watch herbs grow. Oh my. and then repot them later. Um, but when I have them fresh, I'll go out and cut some rosemary or cut some basil. I love basil in any of those things. Salsa or um, sauces or soups or spaghetti sauce, whatever. Um, or like a pizza with basil yeah. and mozzarella and you anything you're making a sauce for you can add some oils too um so that was the soups okay spaghetti sauce and i'm we gonna put all this on a plate potatoes. and show it to you but the meatballs still aren't done so hopefully they hurry up and yeah done, so yeah. and then let's talk some about desserts desserts let's desserts. talk about those <laughs> We might have to change our stance on no dessert tonight because now I've been talking about it. Yeah. But I don't know what to have. Um, so. Well, the thing is, you can add to various, various that? things. What? Wasn't that supposed to be in the meatballs? Garlic? No, it's granulated onions. Probably. Onion powder. Yeah. Okay. No, didn't do that. Okay. Um, and so you can add to whatever you want. One of the things that is an easy way to incorporate um, oils into a dessert is just taking a brownie mix and adding... Um, something to it. Initially, it was peppermint. That was kind of the thing that was everybody's go-to, but I got to thinking, and like, because tonight was kind of a meal, almost like Olive Garden, and so I thought it would be good, might be good to add spearmint. So it would almost be like the mints, you know, that they give you at the end, your um, Andy's mint. Yeah. I thought that might be good. It's also um, really, brownies are also really yeah. good with wild orange wild oil. Wild orange. Uh -huh. And actually, Peggy Muse and I were at a class that her sister-in-law did in Memphis a while back. Sorry, I'm touching my face. And her sister-in-law put cinnamon in. Yeah, I was going to say. And that's really good, too. Yeah. So, so in the brownies, I got to thinking earlier today, um, like if you're doing banana bread, you could easily add cinnamon oil or even better, cassia oil might be um, good. Beth loves that. Beth loving that. Um, the cassia oil would be good, too. So cassia mm -hmm. is very similar to cinnamon, except it's a little bit sweeter. Um, so it has a, a sweeter um, flavor, sweeter smell, actually. Mm -hmm. But those are some just some easy, again, easy things. Um, you, we were talking earlier about um, what do you cake cups. Oh, yeah, do your cake cups, and then we'll talk about scones. Well, it's the same, basically the same thing. Um, I order these from Thrive, but if you can, the, there's all kinds of recipes out there. Uh, Pioneer Woman just mm -hmm. had one on her feed Instagram feed today where she made her own um, cake in a mug, so mug cakes. Um, you could add a drop of any of the oils that sure. we just talked about, too. So Yeah. Um, one of the recipes too we were talking about that I put on the menu was were scones. Mm -hmm. um, so those of you know, a scone is just it's just this little kind of white cookie, like kind of a it's like a combination between bread and a cookie. Yeah, um, but all of the different things that they that they suggested. There was a like a um, I've made I have a recipe from Pioneer Woman mm -hmm. that is a um, lemon rosemary. 
And does the lemon, does that go into the cookie itself? Yes. Okay. Because you have those options and then you have like, you can make a, um, like a drizzle to go over yes. it. Yeah. You know, like if you just you take powdered sugar, okay. Powdered sugar and milk and you know, you make your own just kind of drizzle, but you could add whatever oil you want to add. If you wanted to do wild orange, um, if you wanted to do lemon. Some um, people even like lavender. Yeah. Lavender. Yeah. Yeah. Now would be my favorite. Um, a couple years ago at convention, they had, remember the water stations uh -huh. that they had set up and they had, I wish I could have, they, they were so good and they were interesting combinations of oils. Yeah. And I can't, but one of them I think was lavender. Yeah. It was, yeah. And, it, well, and, and it was actually, it was good. And I know a lot of people will do a lavender lemonade or a lavender and spearmint lemonade. Yes, that's yummy. Um, I know, isn't it your mom and dad that put On Guard in their coffee? Mm -hmm. um, you could do On Guard in your coffee um, or tea, hot tea mm -hmm. in the mornings. Chamomile oil is great in and uh, teas as yeah. well to help you yeah. go to sleep at night. Now, I often do cinnamon. Yeah, I'm doing tea. Um, I will do. Um, that's it's just hot. tell me it's yeah. hot. So, um, I will often do cinnamon. Yeah, or cassia in, and I actually do that in hot chocolate as well. I don't drink coffee. Love the smell, but I don't. I don't like the flavor. But I'll do that in tea or hot chocolate. I'll add anything like that. You I could add orange to your hot chocolate. You know those orange things that you whack open in the the chocolate. And the, yeah, that would be the same concept. Yeah. I've that. been known to add a drop of um, peppermint oil to my peppermint mocha if I'm especially congested right. or sure. whatever. Um, um, Regine asked, how many drops of oils for the brownies? I typically will do two or three drops yeah. for the 8 by 8 size pan. If you're doing a 9 by 13 pan, I would probably do four or five drops. Yeah. Maybe six. And again, the nice thing about that is you can taste that ahead of time. So again, remember, it's kind of just like cutting your hair. You can always take a little bit more off, but you can't put it back on. So start with the fewer drops of, of the oil and then just add um, if you want it to be a stronger, stronger flavor. And think about this too. If you're doing something like that and you take a brownie mix that is for the 9 by 12, think about possibly having halving the recipe. I mean, no, halving the batter. Yeah. And then you could do two different ones. You could do wild orange and a peppermint or you could do whatever like that, something like that too. Yeah. So you can get, and we like to do stuff like that for doing classes where you can do various things. We've done a couple things where we did um, different things and then we made different like frosting or drizzle that they mm -hmm. can put over it. So you've got some that's got the lavender. Somebody can try that or you've got the other things. Even so, just regular, did you say this already? Just regular sugar cookies. Oh yes. You yes. Do. Yeah. And that would be, that would be good as well. So yeah. anything, I'm going to check the meatballs. Anything yes. with like a buttercream icing, you could add um, a flavor to oil too. So not quite that. Um, Regina's a good idea. I'm looking okay. to see what other ideas, if I had anything else as far as the, but I think those were the, those okay. were the main desserts. Let's that I unmute was. and okay. ask, or you can unmute yourselves if you're on, um, Zoom. If you're not on Zoom, if you're on Facebook, then you'll have to type in your comments or jump on the Zoom so that you can comment. I'd love to know some, um, things that you have used Absolutely. oils in mm -hmm. or Did questions you... that you have. Can you say the dressing ingredients again? Yes. Did you do that? Yes, okay. I can do the dressing ingredients okay. one more time. For Hey, Carrie Swafford. Um, half lemon, half wild orange. Yep. Yes. Okay. That's yummy. So the recipe Perfect. for the dressing, again, is one. Tell the name of it again for this. just popped wild up. orange vinaigrette dressing. So it's one cup of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, Half a, no, a third of a cup. Ooh, I put in half a cup, so that might be stronger. Um, a third of a cup of balsamic vinegar. One to two drops of wild orange. I put in four to six. I'm just, it, there's not very little flavor if you don't put more than that in. Um, one, two tablespoons of mayonnaise. A half a cup of brown sugar. And then sea salt and black pepper to taste. And you just mix it all together. And we were talking, you know, a lot of these things you can taste as you go, but like with the meatballs, for those of you that are just joining, um, I took a little bit of the meat. I learned this trick from my mom. I took a little bit of the meat after I had initially added my first set of oils and cooked it up real quick in the pan so I could taste it. Cause obviously we can't taste meat when we're trying to figure that out. So then I knew to add some more, um, of the oil to the meat. So, so those are cooking right now. So let's see. Hey Tara. See who well, and, and for those of you who are coming on late, I actually did not, I was out of just plain balsamic vinegar. So I used half dark chocolate balsamic vinegar and half, uh, what was that, pear, pear. white pear yeah. and so it's cranberry. Like, yeah, so we have a store here in town that Carol gets it's these infused at. So you can get all the oils different stuff. and so, yeah. balsamic vinegar. So that's what we do with that. That's what I did. So I would love to know how, how you all use 
if you've found ways to utilize um, the oil. I know chili, did we talk about making chili? Oh yeah. Cause that's one of the things that you can add oils to it, oil to as well. Yeah. Depending on what, the, I usually add black pepper um, to, yeah, shoe fancy, Carrie said. Yeah. yeah. Oil. Um, I add black pepper to my chili. Yeah. Um, and I often will use um, oregano and yeah. or uh, basil yeah. sometimes. I, I use um, cumin as oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, or so, uh, some cumin. people do like to do cilantro. Great cilantro idea. Cilantro is just really um, oh, yeah. I love cilantro. strong. So it just, that, again, that's one of those that I would recommend with the oregano as well. You'd start with the toothpick, toothpick. like we showed, stick the toothpick in through the orifice reducer, then you take out and then you just swirl it into whatever you're making, which if it's a sauce that works, like spaghetti sauce, yeah. it's easy to do. Yeah. So. Hey, Kim Jackson. Um, Carrie said she adds lime to guacamole. Oh, yes. That's another great yes. idea. Yeah, absolutely. You could do lime, black pepper. Mm -hmm. um, any of those to guacamole. Yeah. yeah. So. We have a recipe. It's called cowboy caviar and it's like black bean, corn, um, avocado mixture. And then you have mm -hmm. it like with chips. There's some type of tomato in there too. Oh yes. And diced. like, a, yeah, diced tomatoes. Yeah. But I add, um, I'll add lime to that. Mm -hmm. Um, usually wild orange, um, black pepper. Um, and I do add cilantro to that. So, mm -hmm. and that just gives you some, some added. And again, doing it cold, you're getting that you're getting the, um, the health, I mean, you're getting the therapeutic, therapeutic aspect from, because we talked about when we, when you heat them up, they lose some of that, not all of it, but they lose some of that. So like we were talking about doing the steamer, you know, how those of you that do the steamers, we, we heat the water up, then we put the oil in. Yeah. So I see Paula Wood's cute babies coming on. Oh goodness. She's got twin grandbabies, Paula does. And so her picture just popped up on Zoom and you can see the, you can see the babies. So anybody else have any ideas of what you do as far as adding oils to, um, to what you're, to food, anything like that? Coffee, drinks. Let me check the meatballs again. <laughs> I still got a couple more minutes. Well, I'm here. Hey, hey mom. Believe it or not, I have my first cup of coffee, I put on guard in, um, coriander. Oh, really? Mm hmm Yes. It was recommended by Dr. Hill, believe uh -huh. it or not. And absolutely. So we do it. Lemon and then cinnamon. My second cup of coffee, I put black pepper in it. Interesting. I'm a black pepper freak. I love it. I love black pepper. I do too. It concerns me a little bit because of the emotional properties mm -hmm. of black pepper. I'm like, <laughs> I got some addictions I gotta deal with. <laughs> maybe, maybe I have some addictions I need to get rid of. <laughs> Do you use um, do you use coconut oil in your coffee ever? No. Okay. I haven't tried it either. I'm just. Yeah, I know some people do that. That would be more though, not like not like the FCO mom. Like you would take a spoonful of. Right. Oh, okay. Like. Okay. Like, yeah. The hardened coconut, oil. and then just stir it oh, up. Right. But it has such yeah. good properties as far as health wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, yeah. That. Yeah. Denise Carroll said turmeric in coffee. That would be good too. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's actually, when you add it to something like that, it's actually it's better okay. than, yeah. Because yeah. um, that, mm, that smell. And mm. then Carrie said, Carrie Swafford said she adds basil, rosemary, and marjoram to her Italian mm. soups. Yes. That's another great yes. oil to cook with. Hey, Carrie, do you remember the day you were, I think you made chicken noodle soup for somebody? What Do you remember what you added to that? Was it time maybe? Could be. I just remember she did that. And her whole thing that day was um, was be, be, be chicken noodle soup for somebody today, you know, kind of like be soothing, be you know, healing to somebody. And that had always stuck in my head. So I was wondering what maybe what extra she put in her chicken yeah. noodle soup. Paulo said um, lemongrass oh. in her hot tea. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Lee said she. I'm assuming this is for coffee. She does butter, butter, turmeric, black pepper, and on guard. Butter in coffee. Uh huh. We we'll do the same concept as the. Coconut oil. Or, yeah, yeah, or you could use ghee. Ooh. Again, Interesting. I'm not saying I do it. Yeah. Um, hey, Regine. It was good to see you. Regine has yeah. to leave, so she's good saying she has you. to go. Good to see you. Um, Carrie said time. Time. The okay. Chicken noodles. Good. Yep. Good deal. So, yeah. So, here, just, again, just some ideas, easy ways to incorporate. And I know sometimes in coffee. Yeah. Um, it is, it, it's a little intimidating. So, again, you can always just start with a little bit. You can always add more. We just can't take it out. So, just um, just do that. Um, let me check the meatballs. Hey, Donna, Starlet, 
good to see new people popping on. They're almost done. Almost Carrie done. says butter is yummy in coffee. And that makes sense because it would just be like a heavier cream or like cream. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Again, I don't drink coffee. So just, I'm just envisioning butter in my hot chocolate and yeah. that does not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, I wouldn't. I, that wouldn't translate, I don't think. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but cooking with your oils is sometimes um, a hurdle that's hard for some people to get past. Um, Cause it's just, but I've, like I said, I've gotten to a place where I have very few dry herbs at my house anymore. I just use my oils um, and they don't go bad, which dried herbs don't typically either. But, yeah. um, but do they, I'm assuming they become less potent. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So you have, and again, our oils would, somebody asked me the other day about expiration dates on oils and I'm like, I, mine don't last that long. So I don't usually. True. Lee said you have to blend it. And when she says blend it, like she means blend it, like oh, okay. use a, uh, oh, yeah. an yeah. immersion blender got or it. a, yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking these might be done. Let me check. It sounds like they could be done. I know. It sounds like it. I'm just going to leave them for another minute. And Denise, then we'll... oh, so you're talking almost like a bulletproof coffee, Denise. She said butter and turmeric and coffee blended in a magic bullet makes it creamy. Hmm. Starlet, that's another really good point. You don't have as much benefit in using dried herbs as you, as you would in using oils, as long as you're not putting them in and flashing them off in the hot sauces. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, adding them at the end of yeah. something. Now, obviously, with the meatballs, I had to do them ahead of time, yeah. so... Yeah. So, um, and we're not necessarily looking for right. the, for the meatballs that was more than, yeah, the taste. So, yeah. But I love doing that when I'm doing soups and that kind of thing. Cause yeah, you know, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times we want soups when we're not feeling well. Um, I, I actually made a, like a beef stew the other night, um, and used oils in the beef stew yeah. as well. So, yeah. so the, meat, the meatballs are almost done and then I'm gonna put it on the plate. Do you want to sell, um, just make sure everybody knows about the four enrollment kits. Okay. And just so that because they Can't remember the, well, and I don't know, yeah. at least that there's. I just want to make sure that everybody is aware and this is only good until tomorrow night at midnight because tomorrow's the 31st, right? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow night at midnight, we have four enrollment kits. Hey, Kim Hudson. We have four enrollment kits that are 20% off until midnight tomorrow night. And they're the really good ones. Um, the healthy essentials kit, the natural solutions is one. Natural solutions healthy habits kit. Yes. And see if anybody remembers the last one. The other one. Does anybody Angie Goderich, do you remember what the fourth one is? Or anybody else that can think of it? There's four of them. Um there's posts on our Team Holt Essentials page if you need to look it up. Um or you can go to your back office and you can tell there. Um so we got that going on and again that's good until midnight tomorrow night. So if you've got anybody that has been kind of um, int showing interest but hasn't been ready to make the step yet those are great kits to call them about and actually one of the ones I can't remember which one it was but one of the ones has several of the well the natural solutions kit does but there's also one of the ones that has several of the on guard products and that we can't really order otherwise um, so that's good and then this coming Thursday night um, I have a post that'll go up at about eight o'clock our time tonight to talk about this, but this coming Thursday night, Amy's doing an emotions and essential oils class. She does a great job with that. Um, and so I would encourage you, that's going to be another great one to bring people to. So if you have people, let's just face it, probably almost every family is dealing with very unusual emotions right now. Because there's just, this is a time in life we've never, nobody's ever seen. Um, nobody that's alive has ever seen. And um, so, you know, and everybody's cooped up in the house together. And sometimes we just need a little bit of extra citrus oil in the house. Oh, don't absolutely. Um, so she's going to talk about the limbic system and how, <clears throat> my name is Kermit. <clears throat> she's going to talk about the limbic system and how it works and how effective it is in, in, just triggering our emotions and well, and even another aspect is our gut health. And yeah. that's one of the things that we don't always realize how important that is. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then of course we'll talk about um, emotions and oils and for kids and all the way to, to grandmas and grandpas, because we've got, we've got a variety of oils we can use. So, yeah. So this is going to be done again. Um, this is going to be done the same way. So 
We'll have it available on Facebook Live, and then we'll also have it available via Zoom. Oh, pretty. Um, we don't have a salad, but that's okay. We can do that in a yeah. few minutes. Um, so you can, and then you'll also be able to watch the Emotions mm -hmm. um, event on time, at the time we're doing it, and that'll give you opportunity to ask questions or give feedback if you want. Sure. Um, but then you, it'll also be available to watch after the fact. Yep. So just know mm -hmm. that. So anybody else have any other questions before we go? I'm gonna show you, here's the, there's our plate. Obviously it's just a little bit. So there's the potatoes, and then there's the biscuit we have to try with the dip and then the meatball. Yep, needs a little bit meatball. more color, but we'll add a I know, I was gonna color. say it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm getting hearts from the Zoom call saying it looks, it looks yummy. Looks so. yummy. So any other questions before we go? Well, I guess we should try this, shouldn't we? Oh, yeah, probably. I'm gonna try the potatoes. I'm gonna try the meatball. Mm-hmm. Let me try them. I'm Sorry, we're rudely eating in front of you. I'm adding a little bit. I'm going to try a little bit of the oil on the bread. I'm just going to put it directly on the bread. Oh, that's good. Kind of in place of butter. Look, I'm surprised. Yeah, Ooh, that's good. Aren't we surprising ourselves this evening? We can cook. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. Mm. So, yeah. So, again, not super hard. And, you know, you can tailor it to what you want. If you want it stronger, you know, some people like things even like with garlic, you know, mm -hmm. some people like that really strong, other people don't. So you've got options. So yeah, this bread dip stuff in the Muse household would have more garlic in it than it does in this household. Mm. Oh, that's good. Good stuff. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys for taking the time. It was to good to see you all. Be I'm us. loving this. Seeing everybody like twice mm -hmm. a week. This is great. So we'll see you on Thursday for yep. the emotions class. Oh, <clears> we didn't <throat> talk about next Monday, but we've been kind of doing um, a little bit more interactive stuff on Monday. So why don't what we do we doing next Monday? <laughs> why don't we do um, why don't we do bingo? Oh yeah. We're gonna, we'll do bingo, but we'll give you all those details. But it'll probably be something where we do things where we will you'll be able to download the card, you can print it off, and then it'll be some maybe questions and answers that are on there and some things to talk about. So yep. stay tuned for those details. That'll but. be another great opportunity if you have guests mm -hmm. or people that haven't experienced an oils 101 class. It won't be a flat out oils 101 sure. class, but yeah. we get a lot of the details. Yeah. So. We'll mix it all up. So yep. bingo, bingo next Monday night. So Thursday night emotions, next Monday bingo. Yep. Okay. And then we also need to talk through, we had a trip planned in April to Florida. Yeah, bummer, yeah. not happening. As um, Ashlyn said, April has been canceled. Yeah. So that's what she told me. I know. Mom's crying. Me yeah. too. I'm trying not to think about it. Yeah. But Ashlyn goes, April has been canceled. So, yeah. so yes. So um, we need to talk through some options. We may go ahead and make that available to everybody. Um, but we'll just, we'll talk it through and see what, mm -hmm. and that will probably, no, not probably. That will be more business related than oil information. So just um, April 18th. Just be ready for that. That'll be a Saturday, um, probably in the afternoon, just like we planned it, because Amy and I do afternoons better than we do mornings. So yeah. we'll do that. Yeah. Um, All right. So anyway, just keep right. watching. And if, if you guys, if you guys have ideas for Facebook lives yeah. like this that we can do, yeah. um, we planned for two weeks, and the two weeks are yeah done on Thursday. Yeah. So um, shoot us some ideas of things that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, and we can do some digging and see what we can come up with for you. All right. Good to see you guys. Bye-bye. Good night.